I'm Matt Beecher in San Francisco for NAREACH REIT World, our 2018 annual conference. Joining me today is Chris Zarnecki, President and CEO of Broadstone Real Estate. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to be here with you. Now, last month, the company launched the Broadstone Real Estate Access Fund. Can you talk a little bit about the impetus behind this latest offering and what it means for the company going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's a situation where our investors and clients spoke and we listened. It's pretty simple, but uh, a little bit more nuance there as well. Um, for a number of years, we had received some strong indications from our uh, wealth management relationships that they were looking for a Broadstone style product, uh, potentially with a little bit of a lower minimum, uh, more liquidity and more diversification to offer to a broader set segment of their client base. And so uh, we did a little bit of internal study, had a development team work on uh, some other product ideas and really followed the interval fund space and saw great potential there. Um, we really appreciated the structure and, and tried to find our way to put our Broadstone stamp on it. And so uh, a few ways we did that uh, was one, in addition to our public equity investing that'll flow through the interval fund and our uh, institutional fund investing that we also do. We uh, love the REIT structure and put a sub REIT in place so we could uh, acquire direct assets. Um, that uh, may not be competitive with our other products, but offer uh, hard assets to the investors. And two, we came up with, a, I think, is an industry-leading uh, fee schedule as well. So trying to bring fees down and make it approachable for everybody and, and you know what it means for the broader platform. Ultimately, we want to continue to expand our reach and our relationship with our wealth advisors and our trusted folks that bring us uh, their, their uh, clients for investment. And by introducing an interval fund uh, with our approach, we think we can broaden the relationships and continue to spread our, our style of investing to a, a bigger audience. Great. Now shifting to Broadstone NetLease for a moment, you've talked in the past about the, the robust pipeline of acquisitions available for the company. How active do you expect to be in this area through, say, 2019? Sure. So uh, actually, it was interesting. Yesterday, we just had our Q3 earnings call uh, intimated to our investors. We talked about our pipeline, um, expecting the pipeline to exceed last year's uh, acquisition target or acquisition amount. So we were in the uh, $680 million uh, total acquisition volume for Broadstone Net last Broadstone at least last year, uh, can easily see our, our pipeline where it is today coming out of our uh, Q3 board meetings exceeding that. Uh, so feel pretty bullish on that and we've um, uh, low, or increased our, our uh, equity flows uh, to correspond to that. So we have a monthly program by which we announce the amount of equity we're willing to take in and, and make sure we're doing a good job maintaining our balance sheet in a conservative manner. Um, so going into the end of the year and into early next year, um, flows and property opportunities seem pretty consistent. I would also tell you uh, from a seasonal perspective, um, Q4 is our busiest and then we tend to see a slowdown in, in new, new acquisition opportunities in Q1. So it's a careful balancing act there always, but um, if you follow our public peers and, and what we're seeing in our own pipeline, uh, 2019 um, should be very consistent from a market perspective, um, you know, all things being equal to where we sit today. And lastly, Broadtree Residential just expanded its revolving line of credit. Can you talk about the reason behind this move and how it positions the company's liquidity position going forward? You know, one of the things that we've learned uh, in, in managing a few different REITs is uh, we want to have um, the same discipline that our public peers have and, and have a lower leverage profile, uh, a more unencumbered portfolio. And so getting a larger line of credit uh, in place early. One, makes us more competitive from the acquisition perspective, obviously provides enhanced liquidity as you referred to, but also positions us to be an unsecured borrower on the multifamily side over time as well. And so um, we've, we've gone through that process, gotten investment grade ratings for our net lease fund uh, through, through becoming a more enhanced um, unsecured borrower and feel like that's the early step that we want to take with Broadtree as that uh, gets going very, in a more fulsome manner. And our bank group has been tremendous to support a, a larger line of credit for us. Again, makes us more competitive in doing acquisitions, but also positions us to do subsequent unsecured offerings. And so that's really the long vision there. Great. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you. For more from REIT World 2018, be sure to visit NARIT's website, REIT.com.